Hello parents, my name is Suzanne. I'm a licensed educational psychologist and school psychologist in the public school system. And in today's video, I'm gonna to talk to you about some tools and strategies that you can use if your children, or if you're a teacher, your student has separation anxiety. In my experience uh, over the last 17 years of being a school psychologist, I have had many elementary school children mostly like TK and kindergarten friends, um, you know, have separation anxiety. And separation anxiety can look like a few different things. You might think like, oh, it's separation anxiety if my child is just crying and, you know, screaming and tugging on my arm and won't let me uh, leave when I drop them off at the teacher's door. But it can also look like uh, stomach aches, uh, difficulty eating, difficulty sleeping, and even aggression and dangerous behaviors. Uh, the first time that I even came across separation anxiety was with a student who was very aggressive. And after his mom left for the day, he would scream, rip artwork off the walls in his classroom. He threw some uh, wood chips at me and his shoe one time and even some dirt from a, a planter. So um, he was very mad that his mom left him for the day. And it did take a few weeks uh, or even a few months uh, if it relapsed once in a while, like after Christmas break um, or a, a fun weekend where he went to Disneyland. I'm in Orange County. And sometimes we'd have to start all over again, but using the same tools and strategies, we were able to help him come to school, get dropped off by his mom and have a good day. And one thing that I've noticed about students with separation anxiety is that after, you know, their tantrum or bit of crying, they all kind of come back and join the classroom after sometimes 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes it can even be longer and then they're perfectly fine and they're playing and they're having a good day. And when you pick them up, you ask them what they did at school today and they have all positive news. Like they had fun, they played with a friend at recess, they ate their snack, uh, they took a nap at nap time. It's just this moment of leaving the parent, leaving the comfort of their parent that creates all this stress and anxiety. And sometimes it can start the night before and sometimes it can start, you know, in that morning routine part of the day. So the first strategy that I have for you as a parent and teacher, you can provide this to your parents, is you can help with sending home a morning routine chart. So uh, in this chart right here, I have it in my store, Counseling Fanny Pack of Fun and Teacher Pay Teacher. Uh, it's just a very simple weekly log. It's one piece of paper. You can print it front and back. And it just kind of helps the child with a checklist of like, okay, I'm gonna, you know, brush my teeth, get dressed, eat my breakfast, go in the car. It's editable. I left it as a PowerPoint instead of a PDF file. So that way, if there's some other, you know, if maybe they walk to school, you could change the car aspect of it. And one of the key points is that the child will earn something when they come home at the end of the day, when they complete the checklist. And that includes that last step on saying goodbye to mom or dad when they come into the classroom. And it can be something free, like we're gonna, you know, go to the park together. It can also be, you know, oh, you get dessert tonight, or you get, you know, 30 minutes of technology time or a cartoon. Um, so parents don't have to spend money in order to provide that reward. It's just something that is incentive that they're not going to get if they don't complete their daily chart. And, you know, they might tantrum because they didn't earn it, but they can get it the next day. Okay, I'm a mom of three. One of my kids is even six years old right now. So we gotta stand strong, be tough, you know, put up with a little bit of crying for that long-term gain. Another important strategy to remember is to not let your children watch TV or use technology in the mornings. So this may sound like 
pretty simple maybe for you, uh, some parents, but I know for me, sometimes I let my kids watch cartoons while they're eating breakfast. Um, you know, I'll set a timer or something like that. So if they have not finished their food after 15 minutes, then the TV does go off. But if your child is struggling specifically with that transitioning to school in the morning, I would recommend no TV, um, no technology. You don't want to make home something fun. Um, even like no playing with toys. The morning is all about getting ready for school and you know, earning that reward for going to school at the end of the day. So they have to prove it to you. Another tool that is available in the Counseling Fanny Pack of Fun Store is a social story. So social stories are meant to teach children skills and, you know, why the skills are important and then how to do them. In my store, one is clearly labeled more like aggression, separation, anxiety, and one is labeled, you know, it has a picture of a little boy crying right here. So that one's more like the crying kind of separation, anxiety behaviors. With using the social stories, um, one thing I would recommend is reading it every night before bed to remind them what to do, you know, and what the expectation is for going to school that, you know, they can use a, a little stuffed animal to help them feel safe and secure. They can maybe uh, transition into their morning with a little bit of free choice playtime, um, you know, maybe even bringing something from home that's not mom, it's like, you know, your favorite toy car or your favorite stuffed animal or book or something that's comforting. Totally fine. These are very young children. And then finally, the last strategy I have for you is just to stay consistent. Uh, read that social story every night about what to do when they're feeling sad in the morning, when you wave goodbye to them and, um, Maybe even give the teacher a copy of the book so that way they can also read it in the classroom because one of my secrets to having social stories work is to read them consistently, have them practice the skills, think about the skills, think about the story and what it's teaching them on those strategies to use every day. And those are my tips for if your child or student has separation anxiety tips and tools and hopefully you can give them a try. There's, they're not something that you've tried yet. So trying something new, hopefully it'll work for you. Okay, thanks for watching. And if you live in the Orange County area and are looking for uh, an evaluation for your child, my name is Suzanne and I'm a licensed educational psychologist. I provide a private psychoeducational evaluations in the Fountain Valley area in person and virtually. Hey, thanks for watching.